Hello, Upper. My name is Jonathan. This year, my wife Kelly and I have been following a reading plan that gets us through the whole Bible in a year, which, as an aside, I totally recommend. You can go for the Blue Letter Bible Chronological Reading Plan. You'll find it pretty easily. Anyhow, right before the pandemic, we were reading through Joshua, and I read that verse, and it's probably one of the only verses that you have ever heard quoted from Joshua, because Joshua is actually an extremely bloody book of the Bible. It's in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, God gives his famous command to Joshua, and he says, Be strong and courageous. And the thing about being courageous is that it kind of implies that you're afraid. It doesn't really take a lot of courage to find something that you don't find scary. For example, our oldest daughter, Beatrice, is not very afraid of heights. And she loves to read books on our roof. If I'm working in the yard, uh, she'll come outside and she'll say, like, hey, Dad, can I read on the roof? And I think it's partly because she really enjoys the thrill of having her own little special place. And she also really enjoys watching the reactions of people who see her on the roof. You know, it doesn't really take a lot of courage for her to get up there. It's quite easy for, for her. On the other hand, her younger brother Samuel is really afraid of heights. A couple of weeks ago, he tried to get, get up on the roof, and it was just very difficult for him. And she eventually got him to get up. His fear didn't really magically d- disappear, but he continued in spite of his fear. And now that, to me, is courageous. You know, he only lasted about five minutes, but I was so proud of him. He was afraid, and he did it anyway. I think there are a lot of passages in the Bible that say, don't be afraid. And I think that because of those, as Christians, we sometimes have a culture of shame when it comes to fear. We think, or maybe we've even been taught, that it's a sin to be fearful. And it's, it's just not. It's normal. It's natural. It can be healthy. And it's, it's a natural reaction to something like a global pandemic. Uh, the, the passage that I hear quoted really often on this subject is in 1 John chapter 4. And it says, uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. You probably heard that passage quoted, and it, or even just heard that phrase. This is a phrase that Christians say. Perfect love drives out fear. But for some reason, this is actually the only part of the verse that anyone talks about, which is funny because it's not the end of the verse. In fact, it's not even the end of the sentence. If you, like, go look it up in your Bible. This, this is uh, 1 John, it's verses 17 and 18, and it says, perfect love casts out fear, comma. It's funny, like we, we quote it, we, we leave out the rest of the rest of the verse. I want to read the whole section for you. This is just two verses. This is 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. Here's what it says. It says, By this love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So if you take this out of context, it sounds like you might have a problem if you're afraid. Like you might have a problem because you don't have enough love. But this passage is not talking about walking through life without fear. It's not talking about never being afraid of anything. This passage specifically is talking about fear of punishment. It's talking about how we don't have to be afraid of God because of what Jesus did for us. It is not meant to make us feel shame about experiencing fear. In fact, if you think about it, like pretty much all the times where God tells people not to be afraid in the Old Testament, you see the angel of the Lord pop up and he says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And what uh, is always implied on the end of that is don't be afraid of me. God is not saying don't be afraid of anything. He's saying you never have to be afraid of me. Again, because of what Jesus did for us. I, I guess where I'm going with this is that it's, it's natural to be afraid. It's natural to be anxious. It's natural to feel unsettled. These times are scary. And, and no one knows the future. And the point is not to have no fear. The point is not to let our fear master us. And that is courage. Courage is pressing forward, even when we are having those strong feelings of fear, like my son Sam trying to get up on the roof. You know, it is courageous to go to the grocery store to get food for your family when you know that there is a deadly virus circle, circling around. It is courageous to give and to share what you have when you don't even know if you're going to have a job tomorrow. It is courageous not to choose to feed or dwell on your fear and to silence the news and to make quarantine memories with your loved ones instead. It is courageous to continue to show up and press forward when what you want to do is withdraw until this is all over. So that's my encouragement to you today. It's okay to feel afraid, but press on anyway. Be courageous, Harbor.